uh, seven pounds of lean muscle. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, how has Reacher grown from season one to two? Um, uh, well, uh, you know, people want to know like how he's grown or changed. Like, how addicted are we to like character arcs? Like, why can't we have more Tom Hanks's? You know, like that dude's never had a character arc in the world. Like. He doesn't, he's not changing just because he's off the island with a volleyball now. Like, he's the same dude. He's just, he's still trying to deliver packages, you know, on time. Uh, that's Reacher. And maybe we should just enjoy the fact that maybe he hasn't grown at all. Maybe he, has not, he hasn't grown. He doesn't have new responsibilities or like a contract that he has to uphold and honor. He's got a toothbrush. Like, maybe he brushes his teeth more. Maybe he's got better hygiene. This season is... Uh you know, Neely, who actually approaches Reacher about what has happened to our team. So, um, and it's more important than the job at hand, which is why she decides to leave her job as a PI in Chicago for the time being and go on this uh, hunt, you know, to, to find out who, uh, who killed her friends. It's funny because she's very down to earth and very chill, but she also has this job and is kind of balling, you know, <laughs> drive the Range Rover and, you know, she, she has the good Amex card and she uh, works in this corporate world, um, which is so unlike her. But I think um, the way that I, I see Neely is that she um, she didn't grow up with anything, you know, she had nothing and she had to take care of her father from a very young age. And so now that she's finally making money and doing well for herself, she's going to enjoy that. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean that that changes who she is and, and her values. She's just um, living the life that, that she now is able to um, while, you know, still staying true to what she believes in. Neely was Rich's uh, master sergeant in the unit that he ran, but much more than that. He, she was a fellow spirit. She was somebody that he admired for her abilities and her mental capabilities and her toughness. And she, in turn, is the only person probably in the world who can tell Reacher off and, and uh, give him a hard time. And he'll listen to her, whereas he wouldn't listen to somebody else. And she has an issue with being touched uh, I don't know why, it's just the way it came out as I wrote it. So this is not like an intimacy, it, this is not like a boyfriend-girlfriend thing. Uh, they never had that kind of relationship. In fact, they've never even shaken hands. But they are dear friends to one another, indivisible. Uh, so that relationship endures, it'll endure forever, I'm sure. Which was a good thing, because the slight negative about the way I wrote this, the book series is that Reacher is a wanderer, he moves on, so there is never a repeating cast of characters. Virtually every other book series has got a whole infrastructure, a whole ecosystem of supporting characters. You know what it's like. This, there's, there's, uh, the cop has got, a, has got bosses, he's got subordinates, he's got friends, he's got a home neighbors, uh, a favorite bar, all of these kind of things that create the structure of the book. Whereas Richard relentlessly moves on every time. And so uh, there are essentially no repeating characters, which is tough for TV because you spend season one setting it all up and you would expect therefore to exploit that in season two and onward. But Richard doesn't do that. He moves on into a completely different situation every time. And that was the one thing that worried me about season two. I felt season one was fabulous, so great. Uh, and coming into season two, Alan Richson is back, obviously. Maria Stan is back, obviously. So those two, that's great. We had the same great writers. We've got the same great production team. We've got the same crews. It should, everything was gonna be okay, except that what I felt in season one the supporting cast was so brilliant, from the co-stars all the way down to the waitress in the diner. They were fabulous. They created a, a sensation of reality in which Richer and Neely could move around. And I thought, that is the one thing I'm not sure about. Can we do that again? Will we get a supporting cast as good as that? And uh, yes, we can. You know, this is the, the most reassuring thing. We have just as good, maybe even better. 
uh, again, from the co-stars all the way down, all the way through the tiny roles. These are great. This is a great cast. And uh, they create the same bed of reality in which the story can unfold. So yeah, that was my one worry. And actually, I shouldn't have worried at all because it is uh, as good as, if not better than before. Uh, the best part of working with the cast this year was just um, how ready everybody was to like jump in the trenches together. It's a hard, hard show to make, and like nobody complains. You know, they show up, long hours, gangrene nights, as we uh, talked about on Tinder, wherever that interview is going to go, and uh, and uh, you know they just they, everybody takes one on the chin to make this show, uh, and that's that's rare in Hollywood. A lot of babies out there. No offense to babies. Downtime looks like um, non-existent <laughs> because we're always working. But uh, to that end, we we have such a good time together. It's been really, really lovely to to form that bond sort of naturally. You know, it'll be five o'clock in the morning and we're still on set and we're sitting in some Winnebago warm-up trailer playing poker or playing backgammon or playing chess. And uh, and then, you know, on our one day off a week, we'll go, um, Alan took us uh, archery shooting uh, a couple of weekends ago. And so it's it's so lovely to, to be able to have that camaraderie naturally, you know, as we would the four characters, we as the four actors also have that um, relationship. So um, it's so helpful to, to have that kind of uh, relationship when you're working on a show like this. And um, it just, makes everything easier um, to have that shorthand and that rapport build in and, and support, frankly, you know, when you're, when you're cold and tired, it's 5 a.m. and minus 20 below. And so, uh, yeah, it's been the saving grace of, of this uh, season to, to really bring those true relationships uh, to the screen. Okay, so this one will go like after the finale, so you can be as specific as you'd like. So can you give fans a hint about what to look forward for for season three, not the book title? Oh, you got me. <laughs> uh, well, I know, so there's a lot to look forward to after season two. And I know that because I'm in the middle of shooting season three. Although I've been barred from telling you the title. I will say that it is an independent adventure for Reacher that is one of the favorites for all book readers. There have been over 200 million books read, and this is in the top five greatest Reacher books. And it's coming out really well, and that's all I'm allowed to say. And I hope people look forward to that much information. Need a new jacket. What's wrong with the one you just bought? It has blood on it. Mm -hmm.